everybody, Patrick from Travels with Delaney here. Uh, just a real quick video on how we winterize our Hummingbird 16FD, as we affectionately call Buzz. Um, when I go through the winterization process, typically the steps I take is, number one, I will make sure my gray and black tanks are completely empty. Secondly, I'll drain my fresh water tank. And then the third thing I do on the outside is I drain my low points, which I'll show you. Then once I get that done, I'm going to go inside, I'm going to do a bypass. Oh, and before I forget, we got to make sure that we drain the hot water tank. Once all that's done on the outside, then we're going to go inside. We're going to switch our bypass valves on our hot water heater, mainly because I don't want to put antifreeze into the um, hot water heater. Not because it's going to hurt it, mainly because I don't want to spend money for six gallons to fill it up. After we have a bypass, we're going to go look, find our pump, and then I'm going to show you how to bypass so you can pump directly from the gallon jugs of antifreeze that you buy at your local hardware or camping store. We're going to run those through everything, and then finally we're going to finish up by getting out all of our food and any items that might freeze over the winter, like Dawn dish soap or shampoos, things like that. Um, and then right as we're done, we're going to throw down some dryer sheets and then some mothballs underneath the trailer, and we'll be good to go until our next trip in the spring. So let's take a look at how I'm going to go about doing this. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to drain any water out of my fresh water tank. And if you look under your trailer, you should find a valve, and I'm going to go ahead and open that up, and you can see there's a little bit of water still in there, and we want to drain that out so it can't freeze. The other thing is I want to drain my low points, okay? And so, unfortunately, I had already done this before I decided to shoot this video. <laughs> so there is just a little bit of water in the fresh water tank that I didn't get out, so I'm glad I'm getting that out now. But the low points, you might have noticed there was just a little bit of pink, okay? That's because we've already ran the pink lines through. Um, understand you you typically want to drain these and I had ahead of time before you run your antifreeze through I had actually drained the fresh water tank um, apparently maybe some water reshifted in there and so we're getting just a little more flow and you want to make sure that's all out of there because you don't want anything to freeze the other thing that I've already done is the last time we used it at the dump station I had already dumped the black tank and I had dumped the gray tank, so those are completely empty. To drain the water heater, we just need to find the water heater on the outside, open it up, and you should find a plug. Now, depending on what brand of water heater you have, um, you'll either find a plastic plug, like we have in this particular model of Atwood that Jayco uses, or in our previous trailers, we had the metal ones with the anode rods. But at any rate, it's going to be the same concept. So we're just going to need to get a socket to put on here and remove this. And then very carefully, and you're going to want to keep that socket on there because it, it, most likely this is going to be full with six gallons, and you're going to want to pull that out. And then once you have it out, it's going to kind of come out in a, a not a steady stream. Then we're going to come up here and open our pressure relief valve, and that's going to allow that water to flow out. Okay. Once it's done flowing out, we can go ahead and put this cap back in, close our pressure relief valve, and we're done with the water heater. Now we just need to go inside and find those bypass valves so we can bypass this water heater when we start pumping through our antifreeze. Another thing that I like to do uh, in the winter months is I like to remove the battery. Okay, here in Indiana, it can get very cold in the winter months. So what I do is I'll just go ahead and remove the battery off the trailer, take it in the garage. First thing I do is I put the trickle charger on and get it fully charged, take a piece of duct tape, label it with the date that I charged it. And about once every month, I just go ahead and throw that charger back on it. That way come spring when we're ready to head out, battery's ready to go, reinstall it on the trailer, no issues. Okay, now I'm inside my hummingbird. And remember, depending on what hummingbird you have or what trailer you have, things are gonna be a little bit different, but the concepts, I think, for winterizing your trailer are pretty much the same. So once you've drained all the lines, now it's time to, and I've drained the water heater, now what I'm gonna do is switch the valves on the water heater to bypass. Because again, 
I've heard that it doesn't hurt to run the antifreeze through your water heater, but why would you want to buy an extra six gallons just to fill up your water heater when you don't need to? So we drain the water heater, now we're going to bypass it. Once we have it bypassed, then I'm going to show you how to find the pump, and hopefully you have the hose attached to your pump, and you can just pull your pink fluid right through. So, okay, let's take a look at where on our Hummingbird 16FD um, the bypass switches are. So in this particular floor plan, it is under the mattress. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to pull the pillows back. And we have replaced this mattress that came with it with a foam mattress. So it's maybe a little heavier than the, the mattress that came with it originally. But I can still push it up. And I'm just kind of using my body to hold it up. And then Jayco did not even attach this with screws, which is nice. So I'm just gonna lift up, slide that piece out of the way. And now we look down here in this particular model. Now I've had trailers that have had three valves. This particular one has two valves. Um, and I believe I've even seen a bypass with one valve. I can't remember, but on this one, there's just two. And so what we wanna do is just flip them. Okay? So whatever direction they're in, bypass them. And now what's going to happen is you can see where cold water, the blue line comes in. Normally, and I apologize for the lighting here, um, normally it would just go right on through into your water heater up and hot water would come out. When I change these two valves, okay, now it's actually shut it off from going in and coming out and now it's going to direct that pink fluid to go up and around. So we're just in essence bypassing the water heater. So just use your body, if you can, to hold your mattress up. And then once you've bypassed, we can go ahead and just slide that piece of plywood back in place. Now, the water pump in the Hummingbird 16FD is actually located here in the dinette area under the dinette booth on the driver's side of the trailer. And you can see it's right here. Now, the way this works is there's going to be this hose. Now, I've already started. Um, and all you do is just pull this hose out and drop it into your gallon of antifreeze. There is, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get you um, an angle on this, but down here, there is actually a valve. And again, that valve, you're just going to want to turn it. And what that's going to do is instead of um, drawing water up from your fresh water tank, it's going to shut that off and draw from this, this hose that they've included. You don't have to attach anything. It's just in here, hidden. And then when you get all done, you'll just want to switch that back so that next spring when you go to run fresh water from your fresh water tank through, it'll actually be drawing from your fresh water tank and not this hose. So once you have your hose, you switch your bypass valve. We're all set to go. Don't forget to turn your pump switch on, okay? And now I can just begin by going around and to every faucet, hot and cold, I'm gonna run it until I see pink fluid coming through, good and steady. And that means you've got antifreeze in your lungs. Now I'm gonna do the cold line. You got good flow there. And the nice thing is on Hummingbird, there's just not a lot to do. Not like our fifth wheel, where we had a lot more um, water outlets. Good. And you can see these are coming out quick because I'd already done them. And one place that people tend to forget is, number one, don't forget to do your toilet. And number two, don't forget to do your outside shower. And those are really the only places to put antifreeze in the, the hummingbird. Now, the only other thing I do, just to be as a safety precaution, is I'll take my leftover fluid and I'll go around and just pour a little bit more in my drain traps. And one of the drain traps we tend to forget is the shower drain trap, okay? So don't forget that you, the last time you used your trailer, you probably, if you use it, there's water down in there. So we're gonna put a little um, antifreeze just to keep that drain line from freezing. Now that we actually have the trailer, quote, winterized, at least in terms of the water systems, now what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and take out 
all food. You don't want to leave anything, candy, nothing, anything that potentially little critters could get into. So we clean everything out food-wise. We also take out anything that could freeze. So soap, shampoos, um, kitchen soap, like our Dawn detergent. We're going to take that out. And typically what we do is we just take it inside and we go ahead and use it up. And that way come spring, uh, we'll buy fresh to bring back out in our trailer. Uh, what we do though, is before we use it up, we do make a list. So come spring, we're not trying to remember what exactly does go in the trailer. So we just recommend taking out anything like that. Now, things that we will leave in here, we leave our pots and our pans. Um, we go ahead and leave um, our, our towels, um, things like that. We just go ahead and leave those in here. We feel pretty comfortable. But what we will do is we'll go ahead and put down dryer sheets, just kind of lay them on the seats and the bed and the floor. And they say that that helps to uh, detract from getting critters. And uh, I'm knocking on wood, but in 15 years of camping, um, I don't ever recall us having an issue with critters in our trailer over the winter months. So um, that's a good thing. And so we really do believe those dryer sheets help. The other thing I'll do is I'll throw a couple bags of mothballs under the trailer for the winter. Um, that smell will also help to keep the, uh, the critters out um, during the winter months. So that's basically they're all there is to winterizing. Now, some people will do other things. I've known people that um, will go and take the vents off their refrigerator outside and then they put plastic around it or like a plastic bag and then put the vents back on. Um, there's all different kinds of things you can do. What I would say is there is no right way per se to do this. There's the way that you feel comfortable and that you feel like you're investing or, or, or protecting your investment because even though a trailer, <laughs> I teach business for a living, so trust me, trailers are not an investment. When we think of investments, we think of things that go up in value and, and we all know that trailers go down in value, but we still have have worked hard for these trailers. We worked hard to make the money, so we do want to protect them. And so you do what you feel comfortable with. And for us, we're very comfortable leaving things like our linens in here. We're comfortable not necessarily covering the vents on the refrigerator outside. Um, but we do make sure that we use the antifreeze. We do make sure that we get food and, and items that could freeze and explode out of the trailer. So Hopefully this helps. Um, if you have any questions, I'm not an expert. I continue to say that in these videos that I'm not an expert. I'm just a guy that's done this for a while and I'm trying to share with you. Um, and maybe if you can pick up a pointer or two, uh, but feel free to reach out to me if you have questions. And if I don't have the answer, maybe I can find somebody else on YouTube or Facebook that does know the answer and I'll get that information to you. So hopefully this was useful and we'll see everybody on down the road. Good night, everybody.